Okay, welcome back. Um, our program is on uh, Her Majesty the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, who passed uh, yesterday and has been succeeded immediately and without ceremony by her son, King Charles III at uh, 73. Uh, her reign spanned seven decades and uh, 15 prime ministers, the last of which is um, Liz Truss, who Her Majesty you know, you know, received uh, just day days before her passing. In fact, um, and we are on air with uh, uh, Ambassador Ayo Olukone, former Director General of Naxima and a former High Commissioner uh, of uh, Nigeria to Australia. Thank you for staying with us, Ambassador. And um, we have also some, uh, let, let's, let's see what we can see about the you know, uh, messages that have come from leaders around the world. We're maybe starting with Liz Truss, uh, the new Prime Minister of the UK, who was the last Prime Minister that she has appointed. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. Our country has grown and flourished under her reign. Britain is the great country it is today because of her. She ascended the throne just after the Second World War. She championed the development of the Commonwealth from a small group of seven countries to a family of 56 nations spanning every continent of the world. Through thick and thin, Queen Elizabeth II provided us with the stability and the strength that we needed. She was the very spirit of Great Britain and that spirit will endure. Okay then, uh, following Liz Trust, uh, a few pictures of um, other uh, world leaders that have also, you know, you know, offered their uh, condolences um, to the royal family uh, on the passing of the great monarch, Queen Elizabeth uh, II, succeeded immediately by her son, King Charles III, popularly known all over the world as Prince Charles, but he's now taking uh, you know, he's, he's kept the name and has added three numerals to it. So he's now King Charles III of the UK. Uh, a lot of people actually spoke about that yesterday when they heard the news refer to him as King Charles III. Um, uh, Ambassador Olukani, uh, there was a matter, you know, it's like they missed or uh, she's, been, she's reigned for so long that we haven't actually had the opportunity to see that these are, this is the way things work in the UK. Uh, when the monarch dies, it immediately you know, dissolves onto the air without even waiting for any ceremony. Uh, that's why Charles could be referred to as King Charles within minutes of the passing of his mother. It's, it is a long tradition of doing things and how things are done, isn't there? If I can, if I can jump in on Kriori. Yes, sir. In the case of... Uh, uh, the new prime minister is the one several times lucky. I think it was like uh, when the, you know something was coming in, a diviner had quickly uh, advised the minstrels quickly, quickly, quickly run that <laughs> close to, to, to Scotland and go and get your mandate. <laughs> and um, a few days after, the I mean, she got a mandate, and of course, uh, the queen passed on to mm. uh, glory. I mm. think we can say she happens to be the luckiest person, you know, on this side <laughs> of the divide, <laughs> uh, you know, for now. But yeah. that's not to say that uh, definitely um, she would not have been prime minister, even if the queen. But I think it's a reflection of what you're, you're talking about in terms of tradition and in terms of the ability to maintain that tradition. And I think we, as a nation, we do have lessons to learn from that. Uh, if not in a situation in which maybe there will have been very many court cases, <laughs> then something else will have happened. You know? But I think um, it's a reflection of, on a serious note, um, the importance of tradition, uh, maintaining. And this is a country that does not have a written constitution. It's been there all along in terms of the whole question of the conventional practices and things like that. 
Um, I, I think I think we have a lot to learn from that way, and also a lot to learn from the Queen. Thank you know, you. as said, in terms of dignities, in terms of the whole question of uh, uh, public service, what does public service mean, which we've lost, you know, all along. I sincerely hope our leaders, especially as we prepare for the 2023 elections, will have a lot to imbibe and learn from a person, an iconic uh, the head of state like the Queen. And um, I, I guess um, I, I feel very sure, as you were speaking about earlier, that um, the traditions of uh, the uh, late Queen now will, you know, a lot of them will be continued, um, her, her worldview, her viewpoint, in, in her heir, her first son, uh, because he had the opportunity to, to learn under her. Uh, his mother was his mentor. Uh, she, when she came in, it was a very, very difficult situation, I would have imagined, uh, because it was sudden. She didn't know. In fact, as you know, she wasn't even in the UK at the time. She was on tour in some far-flung place uh, when the news reached her that the king had died, and because of the abdication issue, she had become the queen, and she was able to move. But Charles has spent all of his life, all of his life, waiting to take up the reins of uh, power. So I don't expect that um, there will be radical uh, differences, um, as you. That, that's why we say. Well, that's why we're saying that indeed, um, you know, the neo king has been prepared for this a long time, and I think she's been in the international diplomatic circuit for a long period in terms of uh, what will be thrusted on him as well. Um, definitely, um, it is a troubled war. Our it world, is. we are in a troubled war. Um, look at UK, the Ukraine, Russian crisis, and Europe itself will never, never imagine um, that um, it will be in this situation uh, in which we'll have refugees across the place. And so there's a, crisis, there's a crisis in Europe itself now, as far as this is concerned. And definitely, I'm sure that one way or the other, um, you know, the king will have to find a way, a role to play as far as this is concerned. Look at the whole question of Brexit, too, as well. What is going to be the new relationship between um, Europe as well as the, uh, as well as um, Great Britain um, itself? Uh, there are also noises in the back in, in, the, in the backyard. Um, your Scotland and others are saying, "Look, listen, we will still do referendum to see if we want to be part of this Great Britain." All of these are waiting. I'm sorry to say a bit to use the word, are demons waiting for the new king? And um, how he goes through it um, is going to be a test of his own experience, a, a test of his own ability. Um, but don't also let us forget that at the end of the day, um, when it comes to the nitty gritty of it, um, in terms of governance, in terms of government, um, you know, the UK government itself is there, the FCO, that is the former world, the, the, the Foreign and Commonwealth Relations Office, um, which is the equivalent of the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is also on ground, people by experienced people and others, who will also provide advice. So it's not that the king himself will just be uh, uh, flying uh, this this flight, this um, airplane on his own. No, 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 he no. has uh, not only first officer and second officer, there will be flight engineers on board who will turn to see if the engines are working well, if there is need uh, in case of a clear air turbulence, uh, the aircraft has to land or even ask the king uh, to you know, go and take a rest uh, in, in the belly of the plane while they try and And what I'm saying is that technical experts and others are there with him. Like we were mentioning, your question of his involvement in the environment issue. Um, I also happen to be close and very much involved in the environment issue. I served um, in Nairobi, in Kenya, as far as the, um, with the UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, is concerned, in various thematic areas of the environment. And as we must give uh, okay. uh, credit to King Charles in this area. Okay. We have what, climate, what? climate change issue, what? biodiversity, um, and all if he's involved in practically all of this. Indeed. And I think this will take it part of his time as well. What, what, one second, please, Ambassador, while we take on uh, uh, our first caller. Uh, Fidel. Uh, Fidel, good morning, sir. Fidel, we can, we're waiting for you. Fidel, are you there? Yes, are you hearing me? Well, um, uh, please go ahead. Yes, I can hear okay, you. Thank, let me express my condolence over the death of uh, the Queen and quickly say that Nigerians have a lesson to learn, if, for, if not for nothing else, that we must uphold our traditional institutions. 
Look at how smooth the succession is. No litigations, nobody is complaining, and there is apparently an indication that the traditional institution, if given constitutional rule, can also lead the nations, lead the states, and so on. Minimize this issue of everybody going for elections and if uh, subsequent beatings and so on. So I want to say that Nigerians should learn a lesson from what is happening in Britain. And above all, the new king must learn from the past of his, mother, uh, his mothers, including the mistakes of the mother, because the world is now developing so fast. The way the mother laid in the past mustn't be how the king is now. So let the king do the best to make sure Nigeria, I mean, the world is united and peace will continue to reign. Thank you and God bless you. I'm Fidel Onyeneke. Thank you very much, uh, Fidel, for, you know, uh, calling in. Uh, interesting uh, way you phrase it there. Uh, you said including the mistakes of uh, his mother. Well, as uh, I can understand what you mean when you, uh, because um, the, as we say locally, only God is above mistake. But pretty much her adoring, you know, subjects, uh, they pretty much see her as the closest you can get to uh, perfection. And uh, most of the troubles that have hit the royal family have not been of her own making, they have observed. It might be her children, which family doesn't have them. Uh, but through all of that, um, she's had this dignified poise. Uh, people could see that she's been hit. That was a metaphoric punch to the gut. But Her Majesty still managed to come through it. No doubt she would have been very, very pained. Uh, but she just was that kind of a lady. She, she, she was holding it together, not just for uh, her family, but for all of Britain. Ambassador, uh, perhaps, what, what, what do you think about well, that? Well, let, let, let me say that, I mean, if you look, if you hear the um, remarks of Head of State across the world, um, the words that come out is dignified person, trusted, we rock, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the midst of them. Um, a difficult period, and Comeons showered on her. That is the kind of person she is, and I think she's done very well for Britain, even at that particular period as well. Even if we look at the Rancor's debate during the Brexit, she was also always very, very dignified. And let me just briefly um, um, make a detour here and do um, um, make reference to an issue. Indeed. Um, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm very much aware of the role Netherlands embassy, the Netherlands, uh, the, the government of the, the Dutch government, Um, commissioned a report um, looking into investig I mean, investigated traditional rulers, the traditional institution, because, you know, they still had Queen Beatrice, too, you know, in, in the Netherlands. And they looked and they selected some highbrow Nigerians to look at traditional rulers in Nigeria. Traditional rulers, the role of traditional rulers in Nigeria. It's a publication, and I will, I, I, I will recommend that um, anyone who wants it, I mean, we can look at it as well. Indeed. In terms of what role can traditional ruler play as anchors in the process of development, especially in a world in which we are now. Indeed. One moment, very, Ambassador. Very One moment, please. Uh, uh, Ambassador, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon for interrupting you, Ambassador. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, um, and along the lines you were talking about, I, I recall that it's a prized opportunity for even heads of Nigeria, to be invited by the queen. They looked, they looked for this opportunity. I remember Babangida, you know, and his wife were, in the, were at Buckingham Palace. I think uh, President Obasanjo, was it, uh, you know, um, as head of state, he also was there. And um, Shehu Shagari was there. So it, it was, it surprised uh, event to, to actually be received by the queen. First of all, to have audience with the queen. And then in this case, to actually be invited Uh, by her, uh, that of, of, of course is going to call for uh, a state banquet. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Mazi Okoroavo, uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for holding on. Good morning, sir. Good morning, our, our guest. Well, the Krapos family, the Blue family, and this morning, program family, we send our happy sympathy to the UK and the whole world over the demise of the Queen. Well, there are lessons we have to learn. When Queen was lost to the hospital, it was not lost to the hospital outside. UK. It was within the UK. We have to learn a lesson from there. And we, Nigerians, or the Africans, there are things we have to look at. Successor is not what is done to political uh, arena. We have seen what's happening. I think one of these states, they are now going to elect a woman over 30. Some, something people are vying for that post. This one doesn't take so That is why 
the Mosia is the international constitution that will specify things that could be done if the person on the throne is no longer there. What the question of turning the system into politics? And we as Nigerians, we have seen what we did, that no president, that no prime minister that goes to the office without consulting the queen. Whatever the prime minister will do, whatever the, the cabinet, everything, everything follows sequentially. There was no, uh, this man from this state, he speaks this language, speaks this uh, religion. It didn't happen like that. It doesn't happen there. We can watch our prayer to work for the, the, the continuity with there. That is what Africans, 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 Nigerians, to do what? To learn the lessons. Okay. When Queen came to Nigeria, yeah. at that time of independence, we saw what she did. So Indeed. Kudos to the UK. Nigerians play, then they listen. National institutions, then they listen. Thank no you. No more tragedy. Inside expression. Thank you very much. May have so rest in peace. All this right. Then. Appreciate your calling in, uh, Mazi, as always. Um, uh, she didn't die in the hospital, as you might also know. Um, she actually passed at Barmoro Castle, uh, which is a favorite, uh, one of the pads, if I were to use that irreverent terms, one of the uh, numerous pads uh, available to the Queen. Barmoro Castle is reported to have been very, very familiar, very, very comfortable uh, with that area. And so when all of this you know, happened, uh, she withdrew to there, and um, all her family were around her. And as, as you've heard in the news, uh, she died very, very peacefully, uh, surrounded by all her loved ones uh, at Balmoral uh, Castle. Uh, Ambassador, uh, the, the role Sorry? of track. Well, well, what, 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 one issue which I think before the program ends, I want us to look at also is that this, this. Sure, sure. Go um, ahead, please. There's a question and there's a question and issue now that uh, look, I was talking about the whole question of traditional rulers. Yes. And I made reference to the study which was conducted. By the Dutch, the government, the Dutch government through the embassy, um, traditional rulers in Nigeria. And I think it's a very, very useful document in terms of what are the findings and Indeed. the role. But Indeed. the question and issues of should we, because given the example of the Queen, long tradition, you know, a, a solid rock in the midst of a storm, um, put in the whole question of traditional rulers in terms of our constitution. Um, I don't, I don't think I would subscribe to that, honestly speaking. Um, we can't find a role for them, definitely, in terms of what track and role. And don't forget the, 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 the traditional institutions in Nigeria, too, as well. Um, it's also subject of so many um, controversies here and there. It, um, it goes back to of, tradition, uh, doesn't it? You know, it goes back to it, our yes, different traditions. I mean, a lot of cases, there are even court cases in yes. terms of what exactly yes. happened. So yes. we have to be very innovative yes. in terms of what exactly we can do. What lessons, What are the lessons we can learn from Britain, especially from the life of the Queen Indeed. itself? I mean, some of the callers have mentioned it uh, in terms of uh, the whole question of service. Yes. When the Queen started, that was where she started from. That she's going to give her life, it's going to be a life of public service. Period. Be it and short, be it that long. Very, be it short, be it long. Lesson. Were her words. Be it's it short, be it long. She will dedicate it to the service of her know, people. At the end of the day. Um, so, and I'm sure that um, sometimes, even with Jen Tool as it is, I won't be surprised if there are times when she locks the door and then the Queen will now look at the politician and themselves in the face. They, no, you yeah. can't do this. Exactly. Bang the table. Okay, we, 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 we've got to leave it there, Ambassador. And they can come uh, out Ambassador, we've, yeah. we've run out of time, but I thank you thank immensely. You. Uh, thank you very, very much for your insight and your experience that you're sharing with us uh, on, on this occasion. Sad but expected. She was 96. She's lived a glorious life, admired. And um, so thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Ayo Olukoni, former DG Naxima and former thank High you. Commissioner of Nigeria to um, uh, Australia. Thank you very much, Uncle Yori, uh, right. for having me and giving me the opportunity to share some thoughts with you on this. And I would sincerely wish our country and the people of Great Britain and the entire Tamilan community all the very best as we move from one area uh, to another. To, the, I mean, to another um, area. Thank you very much, sir. Well, as you know, curious, well, not curiously, but it's unique. The Queen, you know, of course, she's seen as the uh, head of the Commonwealth, uh, the head of Great Britain, her figure, you know, there you go. The, almost that profile, it's on the sterling, it's on the coins um, of the face of Britain. But for all of that, strictly non
partisan. Um, she was not involved in government, even though government takes authority from her uh, to continue with their work. Uh, but it's, it's a marvelous system, the way it's worked. Look at that particular that I said, uh, that I spoke about um, uh, at the beginning, where you know, the, it, it is already known who is going to succeed. And even when there's a hiccup, as there was when her uncle abdicated, um, it still is you know, taken up. No quarrel, no court cases, nothing. Um, it, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful thing, and she was a wonderful lady, uh, beloved, admired uh, by all. Ordinary person and you know, statesmen around the world. Well, that's our program today, and something of our tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth I. I beg your pardon, Queen Elizabeth II, who has passed on uh, after reigning for over seven decades at the grand old age of 96. And it needs to be said, has been replaced by her son, who is now known as King Charles III. The coronation will come afterwards. That's our program today.